new guest today. Welcome back to Tam tonight. Another episode today. We have the illustrious, the talented, oh. the educated Miss Monet. Hey, so happy to be here. I know we've been talking about this for a while, yeah. so I'm like really excited. She is one of my favorite people on TikTok. It's so weird when you're like a friends with person on the internet and you interact with them all the time and you see them in real life. You're like, I know. I know. It's so crazy. Like I hear your voice all the time. So to finally be here with you, it's like I'm really excited. It's so exciting. So was it today or was it a little bit earlier in the week that your new birthday song? I'm calling it the international birthday song. Oh, thank you. Yes, it was last Friday, so it's been out for a couple days now. Um, I wanted to make sure it was out before my birthday, which is tomorrow. Yes. So yeah, I'm really excited. When you put that TikTok out, the mm-hmm. message, I never really thought about it like that, uh-huh. but it did hit home. Why are all the birthday songs by a guy? I don't know. And you know what's crazy? And I think we were following each other then. The whole concept of the song came from my most viral TikTok. Like I stitched this one girl, mm-hmm. um, her video, and she was saying, you know, fucking happy birthday, send the racks through. <laughs> And I stitched it with the rest of the the verse, which at the time it was like a random Wednesday. I'm Mm -hmm. just like sitting on my couch. 10 seconds, I thought about it, did it, and it went viral. And you know, everybody's like, make this a song, make this a song. At the time, I didn't have a beat, a song, nothing. I'm like, y'all, you know, I don't know. This came out of nowhere. I'm just, at at this point on TikTok, I would put videos out and they do nothing. So I never thought anybody would see it. Um, but yeah, when I was thinking about putting a song together, I'm like, dang, all of these songs are by men. All of them. Um, and lucky, so, they're kind of, some of them are kind of derogatory. Like, yes. this is not how yes. I want to celebrate. All I want for my birthday is a big booty. <laughs> and you were just going down the list, I'm like, damn, another one. Yeah. This is yeah. not, I do not feel celebrated. Yeah, and so, I mean, I think the interesting thing about it, like, doing this song, and it was funny, I was talking to my DJ friend about it, shout out to DJ DC. Um, he's like, you know, we have these DJ sets and usually they'll play two to three songs for short snippets. So the concept or why I wanted to do it this way is like, you have these birthday songs, whether it's Ratchet Happy Birthday or Big Birthday Ho, whatever it is. You turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. And then it's like this change mood, like, man, F that happy birthday, send them racks through. Yes. Like, about to turn up. So I think it's pretty cool. I'm like really excited. It's my favorite song that I've done by me so far. So I feel like this could be your viral song. I hope so. Fingers crossed. Because yes, Shot Clock is that girl. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> Shot I love Shot Clock too. That's my baby. It's my first single every time. time. I could be scrolling at work like, oh, it's Shot Clock. I'm like, damn, no, it's yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be Shot Clock all the time. It can't be Shot Clock all the time. But that birthday song, because it says everything that's on our phone. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yeah. it's in the rest. Yeah. And. I know you've seen me on TikTok because we're like avid on mm-hmm. that. I've seen those videos where it's like when a guy does not have the correct energy on your birthday. Oh man. And they bring the whole thing down or they yeah. try to yeah. with their little salt. And I'm just like, this is not what we Yeah, and it's like, you know, at the end of the day, your birthday is special. You know, we see all these posts that are like, celebrate your birthday, you never know it'll be your last. And that's a little morbid. But it's the it truth. is the truth. And so it's like your birthday is once a year, that's the time for you to be unapologetically about you and so you want people around you that have that same energy yeah, I, I and sometimes ask. these dudes don't listen i, ain't fucking with it, I, gotta I ask. barely fuck with you because i had to ask you that's good <laughs> like you said my birthday is once yeah, a year yeah once a year come, come with me. so i want to ask first mm-hmm. of all where are you from because i see that you live in texas yes but you do not give me texas girl i don't know no. what do i give you before you i tell you where i'm from Cal- i'm absolutely from california yes. born and raised in compton okay um so i'm happy to be home visiting you know i said my birthday tomorrow so i'll be with my family exactly. um yeah born and raised in compton but i've been living in houston now for six years and you're a usc girl with the usc yes i went to san diego state for undergrad okay. and then i was usc for grad school you did the same thing as sweet Yes, actually. Okay. We went same time, both schools. Well, she transferred to USC, mm-hmm. and I went there for grad school, so she was there a year before me. Okay. Um, but, yeah. Still USC for a black girl to be deep. Yeah, no, I loved going to USC. Fight on. Um, love San Diego State. That school, like, changed my life. Um, so, yeah, I enjoyed it. But that was why I also wanted to move to Houston after finishing school, because I had never lived anywhere but California. Um you know, one in San Diego was two hours from home. Then I came back home essentially to go to USC. So I just wanted to try something different. So how do you feel about the, I don't want to say like the hot mm-hmm. but like the transition between being a smart girl, very smart girl, mm-hmm. 
and trying to rap and that not being seen as something that like you would want to do or that even that you yeah. would attain. That's so funny. Have I talked about that on TikTok before? Maybe. Maybe. I don't, yeah. know. I don't think I have, but to be honest, you know, I started rapping. I just recently started rapping like in terms of recording songs mm-hmm. and stuff, but I started doing covers on social media in 2016, like, you remember the So Gone Challenge? Yes. Yes. The So Gone Challenge was the first time I ever, like, oh, everybody was doing it, and I was just like, you know, I was going to get a smog check, I remember. <laughs> I was going to get a smog check, and I'm just listening to it, and I'm, like, coming up with lines. I'm like, oh, that would be cool, that would be cool. And so I did it, and everybody's like, wait, like, this is actually good. The delivery wasn't good. And I remember I had a friend who was rapped at the time, and they like, the bars are hard. You you sound way too proper, but the bars are hard. Um, but yeah, so I started doing that and like I would just randomly with popular songs do covers, but I never saw myself rapping. Like I was because of everything that I did in grad school, in undergrad, like I was always pushed and molded to be very professional, like incredibly professional roles that I've had, leadership things that I've done. And that was cool, and I learned a lot, but I realized that in certain ways, people were molding me that in ways that were not true to myself. Like, I feel like it's perfectly okay to be multifaceted. Like, it's okay to be able to exist in different spaces in different ways. And I didn't feel like I was able to be my full self because everything was, you know, you have to speak this way, dress this way, think this way. You have to have these kinds of opinions on things. And it just didn't feel true to me. Like, I didn't feel like I could be my full self so eventually you know I was kept doing these covers and I didn't think anything of it you know in a whole career at this point (laughs) um and I went to the studio one time with my brother and that was my first time recording like one of my freestyles and I'm like oh wait this you know I always hated my voice that was another thing too that was holding me back and there's a scientific reason why people tend to to not yet like your own voice so that was another thing. I'm like, I can never do this. Like, I, I don't even like my own voice. I would literally record a cover, like do a video, and not listen back to it because I didn't want to hear myself. Aww. <laughs> but anyways, I go to the studio and I'm like, wow, this is kind of dope. And maybe like six months later, I go to the studio and this time with an actual engineer, an audio engineer, and I record and I was like, this is good. Like, I I I really enjoy this. I enjoy the process of recording. Um, and that's just how I was like, you know, I don't really care what anybody else thinks. Like, this is something clearly for years that I've been holding myself back from because of how people might perceive me and people being like, what are you doing? You know, why Why would you do that? You could have been this and could have been that. And it's like, okay, and, you know, this is what I want to be doing. This is what I find joy in. So I'm so glad to hear you yeah. say that because as a fellow acceptable black. Yeah. <laughs> right. I graduated early and grew up at Cherry all of these things. You can't do this, you can't do this. So yeah. many rules, you can't do nothing. Mm-hmm. But just be there, be cute. Yeah. Bring it proper. Yes, be the closest, and I hate to say this, but it's the truth, especially for older black people. I was talking to my grandparents. Yeah. Be the closest you can be to white as far as your attitude, mm-hmm. like, oh, how you oh, talk. Are we gonna really go there? Well, look how you act, how you talk, how you dress, yeah. your friends, all be as closest to that you can, but still be proud to be black because we're yeah. black and you got here, we work mm-hmm. hard, you have these things. Yeah. But it's like myself. No, I'm not even getting time to figure out who myself is. Mm-hmm. Y'all are coming at me. Uh, uh, yeah. uh. How come your hair is like that? Yeah. Like, you need to do this. You need to straighten your hair. You need to like, damn. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I can't mm-hmm. breathe. Exactly. So you got five minutes to figure out something you want to do for yourself and boom, it was rapping. Yeah, and boom, it was rapping. <laughs> and I don't know where it Well, when I look back at it, I've always enjoyed writing. Like, mm-hmm. I was an English minor in school. English was always my favorite um, subject in like high school and stuff. And then when I went to college, it was my minor. So, I've always enjoyed writing, and when I look back on it now, I see how there was little pockets of like this building towards rapping. Um, you know, I'm a Delta, and like when we had to do anything with like greetings, anything like that, I would always write them. Um, and so when I look back, I'm like, there was little inklings of it coming up, um, but I just know nobody ever. <laughs> if you would have met me in like college nobody ever would have said oh she's gonna be a rapper like i wouldn't have nobody else would have so it's definitely different um because like i said i was being molded into so many things and it, happened, it started happening so young you know immediately going into college it was great because it's like you know people see something in you people mm-hmm. tap to me for things like 
you should be doing this. You should be doing that. And at the time, I'm just like, okay, okay. You know, I was a first generation college student, um, first in my family to go. And so it was exciting and it was experiences that I was enjoying, but it wasn't until years later that I'm like, finally being able to pause and assess and figure out things for myself. And I'm like, I, I just don't feel like this is my full self. I feel like I'm, I'm being a character at this point of what everybody else is telling me that I'm supposed to do, when and how. You know, there was just too much restric restriction for me. The so, craziest yeah. part about all of that is you're still all of those things. Absolutely. And you're still with some of all those experiences mm -hmm. that people, you know, put you in. Mm -hmm. But this is you too. Absolutely. So it's like, do you feel like with rap you get to maybe say more of the things you wouldn't say or say things, express yourself in a way that would not be seen as appropriate in your regular real self? Yeah, well, and I don't even want to say real self. I mean, granted, of course, making music is entertainment. So mm -hmm. there are elements of it. You know, not everything I rap make is my perspective. Some of it is my friends' experiences, people around me, those kind of things that I appreciate that I'm able to put that into art. Um, but yeah, absolutely. With rap, like I don't just walk around saying "fuck a happy birthday." Like that's crazy. Send it right through. You know, I don't just walk around saying that. But you know, also it's not too far. <laughs> it's not too far off. Um, but so having those different elements and being able to express myself in this way is fun. And I won't act like you know there hasn't been struggle. Like I said, it took years for me to even be like, you know what. Forget what everybody else is saying, yes, I'm going to do this for those reasons. For, you know, me being worried about, oh, well, why is she rapping about this? Or why is this the content of your music? And it's like, because I want it to be. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's what? You know, the thing is, I can rap about a lot of things. And I love that about that. I did a freestyle. And you may not have seen it because I never put it on TikTok. Um, but after the Supreme Court decision, um, especially, you know, me living in Texas and, girl, <laughs> We don't even want to get started. But after that, you know, I did a freestyle to um, Rob Four Nine Culture Island. And okay. the whole concept of the song was talking about that decision and talking about the ways in which I feel, you know, there are certain politics that are very restrictive for women's rights, et cetera, et cetera. And so I can rap about anything and will. That's the thing. But also I feel like being able to have fun in and of itself, it, it feels like rebellion to me. Mm -hmm. It's like rebellion against all the ways in which people said I had to be a certain thing, see, speak a certain way. Um, and so I enjoy it. You know, I definitely, I still feel, I'm human. So I still feel that pressure sometimes of like, you know, what content am I putting out there? Only, But I think it's because, or what I've realized for myself is that it's because my discography is so small now. Like I have music done, but I only have two songs out now. So because I'm in the party lane right now, I think there is part of me that's still like, well, I want, I want people to know that I can rap about this and I can do that and I can do this too. Like I can do all those things. Um, but I just realized I'll get there. You know, the time will come and I give myself pause because I have to think about, well, why am I even thinking like that? You know, why, why do I feel like I have something to prove? Why do I feel like I, you need to know that I can rap about something else? And it just goes back to that program. And again, like people telling me I had to be a certain way to be valued, to be respected. And that is like still in the back of my head. So I'm trying to push that down. I cannot stand the respectability politics. And I'm going to call them fake respectability politics. All of a sudden of hip hop since mm -hmm. the girls have gotten popular. Listen. Because for years and years, my whole life, I'm mm -hmm. in LA too. Yeah. I've been in the backseat of one of my parents' car listening to How About Bitches Ain't Nobody. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm not supposed to give these bitches nothing, blah, blah, blah. Have as many as you can, yeah. all of this. But now we're out talking about our own mm -hmm. and what we can do. Yeah. Or maybe give me some a little bit of money. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're the worst <laughs> people in the world. Because, you know, and the thing is with that, as women, unfortunately, there is nothing that we can do that is going to please everybody. If you are the prim and proper and, you know, you kiss a man's hand and feet, then somebody is calling you a pick me. Mm -hmm. um, pick Misha. Pick you, Misha. You get in play. You a pick Misha. You get in play. You know, if you rapping about your coochie while all the other men are doing it, now you a hoe. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's nothing that we can do to please everybody. But at the end of the day, you literally have to do what is pleasurable to yourself. And realize that, you know... We're human. One thing may work for you at this time, 
in five years you may be on something completely different as per myself um so yeah. i think it's completely fine to express who you are at any given time um i think it's unfortunate that people try to hold us to certain standards and to past versions of yourself like if you want to move on from something then you should be able to do that why not as long as it's not hurting anybody you know that's always how i look at judging anything in my entire life is this harmful to you or someone else if it isn't more power to you do what you want in this lifetime because we only get one i agree and for female rap it's like why do we have to be all of the roles that we already are in real life mm -hmm. on the track. I'm mm -hmm. not, I don't want to be your mama on the track. Hello? I don't want to be your wife on yeah. the track. Well, I'm already right. your kids. Y'all be talking about being in the club <laughs> and this and that vacation. We can't talk about being a city girl. Mm -hmm. We can't talk about turning up. Yeah. Man. Why? I even saw the great Snoop Dogg. Like, yeah. girls shouldn't be talking like that. Like, come on now. Yeah. And my thing is like, what, how does it diminish me? In what way? Like, mm -hmm. we're all sexual beings. Come we on. all do these things. In real life. And if you're going to talk about the whole wife thing, the, mm -hmm. the Bible, being a wife and being a hoe, y'all wouldn't wipe up your girl who wasn't falling in the <laughs> Listen, now you want people to start facing their own contradictions. Come on now. If Miss Monet wasn't popping and the internet and looking good, y'all would never listen to her song. And that's, you know what, and that's the sad part about it too, though. Like, on the other hand, I think it's unfortunate that the girls who do focus Put on the that real rap. Yeah, real rap. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of dope artists who do, yes. and they don't get the shine, don't get the limelight. It's like people only bring them up in contrast to someone else. And that's why I love when Cardi was like, you know, stop bringing up Rhapsody only to compare her to me. Like, Rhapsody is dope. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is like, she is, her mm -hmm. pen is crazy. And so she deserves that acknowledgement on her own it shouldn't be only to put somebody else down because that's not genuine y'all y'all don't actually care no and i've had this conversation with men that rap mm -hmm. and i'm like hey, you guys don't want to hear a girl with that tupac because it's going to be very accusatory for y'all yeah. it's going to be yeah. very uncomfortable mm -hmm. to hear a girl talk for you know 30 minute album about how you niggas do us wrong no. how y'all don't be there for y'all kids how y'all have no integrity <laughs> y'all don't want to hear that on the scene. <laughs> Oh, you going there for real? She would be a killer doll. I remember Bill Bill's Bills came mm -hmm. out and everybody acted like Beyonce was a gold digger. Of the yeah, century. yeah. I know y'all wouldn't want to hear a girl coming with that Kendrick Lamar accountability. Y'all would pass out. So Absolutely. Please, It'll sound about. like a sociology class. Okay. You know, they don't take those. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know research and things like that. But they don't do that. You know, it's just opinions, opinions, opinions. So, what about, okay, you went to school here. Mm -hmm. Out here's party. San Diego's definitely a party school. Not for us. You know? No. Oh, um, I get what you mean. Yeah, not for us. Not for us. Um, and it was crazy because when I decided to go to San Diego State, everyone was like, oh, that's a party school, that's a party school, that's a party school. Mm -hmm. Girl, the black population in San Diego State is like it's, it's 4%, less than 4%, mm -hmm. something crazy, out of 30,000 plus people. So we definitely had our fun. You know, a lot of the Greek organizations, the fraternities would mm -hmm. have parties. Okay. Um, but that was literally like twice a semester. Um, other than that, you know, if somebody maybe wanted to have an apartment party, then that was going on. But honestly, it was not, no, it's not a party school for black people. But I had, like I said, that were, those were my formative years. I had an amazing time. But I didn't, I didn't party in college. <laughs> so you, you, know, you got to Houston out of money of people. Pretty much. You know, I would say like maybe my last year in LA, that was the first year, and I was in grad school. Um, that was the first year I kind of really started going out. I didn't even drink until I was 23. Like, that's good. That's yeah. Y'all threw it. Yeah, I didn't even drink until I was 23. Um, so it's crazy now that I have a song called Shot. <laughs> people are like, I don't remember when you didn't even like, she's drink. Her name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it, I started going out then, and then now I live in Houston, and of course, Houston is something to do every single day of the week, and I'm. Surprisingly enough, like I'm very introverted, so I I haven't always been the most social person, and that's why like it's been a shift for me to get out more, go have fun, and I didn't realize you know how much I was kind of missing out on because I was so closed off for so many years. You know, even in college, I didn't go out that much. You know, I went to the Greek parties like because those were a couple times a semester, but other than that, I didn't go to like house parties and, or anything like that. So. It was just later where I was like, oh, this is fun. Like, I enjoy being out. I enjoy being yeah. social. I know I need my time after to recharge, but I like going out. So, yeah, I, I learned that sort of later on. 
So how was the transition going from LA to Houston as far as like culture? Like you said, they have to leave every single day and yeah. how are people so it's different? Like, yeah, it's very different. You know, honestly, um, and like I said, I've been, it's going on six years now, but three years of those were pan- pandemic years. So oh, it was yeah. like very yeah. close out. And it's crazy because that's when I knew Houston was really a lit city because probably after that first, you know, sort of year of the pandemic, well, we were still in the pandemic, <laughs> but didn't care. Yeah. No, I knew Houston didn't care when we had a tropical storm. Um, not even a tropical storm, the winter freeze. A couple years ago, we had a winter freeze. I mean, the whole city was shut down. You couldn't do anything. Like, it was very serious. And the next day, the minute it broke past 40 degrees, people were out again. I said, oh, yeah, y'all are so unserious. <laughs> Y'all are so, not even at, no, not at home barbecuing. No, like, they be out. Like, yeah, they have a out, 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 yeah, out. Like a um, but yeah, so transition was definitely, Houston is different than LA. You know, I feel like, and I haven't lived here in a long time, so I definitely, I don't know what to do out here. But even my friends who live here, it's like, you know, people visit and say, where do you go? Where do you go out to like hang out around us? And there's not a lot of options. That's not um, but in Houston, it's like there's good food. There, I don't smoke hookah, but it's hookah everywhere at every kind of restaurant. Um, and you know, it's just a good time. So I enjoy the culture there just because being in the South, like there's definitely a different energy than being on the West Coast. Um, and I still love home, like LA is home, you know, that's why I'm, I'm here for a week to just enjoy my family. Um, but Houston is fun, like it's just a really good time. So I enjoy that too. Also, I think you're in the perfect kind of place for you to be starting out as a female rapper mm-hmm. and sort of gaining your popularity. Because I hate to say it, we don't support that really in California. You know, it's crazy because when we talk about girls, like women rappers and who's from California, like people don't really, California people don't have that like repping the West Coast thing that people from New York do, that people from... Houston do like everybody else is so tied to a location yeah. but you know they try to act like Doja Cat is not even from the west coast mm-hmm. um I think Sweetie definitely has you know everybody knows she's a Cali girl mm-hmm. um Kamaya of course yeah, love me some food. Yeah, 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 absolutely mm-hmm. but we don't have like this I feel like big push like everybody else does with um you know repping exactly where you're from mm-hmm. and being able to say like oh these are the Cali girls yeah uh, Lady London is from California too. Which oh, she also was, went to USC. I thought she was from New York. How she talks, her accent. Did I just Lady London, yes. I might, I might be wrong about that. Lady she London. did go to USC though. Okay. That's probably what I'm thinking of. Okay. She knows. Uh, she's you know been in LA for yeah, a she while. Right, so for sure, you are so right. But we don't like support. And I see, yeah. like I go to a lot of shows, so we have some up and coming girls mm-hmm. too. And I see that they just don't get the same push and the same love as the guys. Yeah. Like, even when people mention it. Like, oh, yeah, I love so-and-so. He's, mm-hmm. oh, he's coming up off the rest. Mm-hmm. Like, what about the girl that's been right. to, like, seven more events than him? That's mm-hmm. more popular mm-hmm. one. Like, we don't. You I'm like, put me on to some people. Because I, I feel like I'm, you know, since I'm not here physically, like, I don't feel as tapped in. Um, I know more Houston people, but. Yeah. But, like, Houston, y'all have a lot of girls. Y'all a have a lot. Like, Mona Leo, Leo Ken the Man, yes. Megan. Libra Jolie. Libra Jolie. Yeah, it's a lot of girls. And they pump it up. I'm like, dang, how come we don't do that? Yeah. Like, these girls got to come in every mm-hmm. week. I'll be hard pressed to see one of the LA girls out in a room. But it's like, but that's the difference, though. The culture that we talked yeah, about. Yeah, they support it. There's somewhere to be every day of the week. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot more opportunity. Okay. Hosting in LA, where, I, I mean, the big people are barely hosting in LA. So it is a little bit different. I would say, I don't know that the opportunities are there as much in terms of club hosting mm-hmm. because. Listen, and that's how Wednesday you, night is the club is going up, <laughs> and that's how you get a song like "Shot of Pop." Yes, I mean, yes, for sure. That is my favorite. I think that's probably my favorite song that I've learned off of TikTok. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no, no. Because you know some of the songs you learn until people got to be. We're mm-hmm. not gonna name names. So yeah. Like, past that part that you heard on TikTok, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I don't know this song. Yeah. Like, what is that? Yeah. Oh, this song fell off after mm-hmm. those couple seconds. Mm-hmm. But "Shot of Pop" is the song all the way. Yeah, no, I love Shot O'Clock. That's my baby. Um, Because that was probably maybe the like fifth or sixth song that I recorded. It definitely wasn't my first. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had recorded it coming off of a long break. I have been recording. And again, I wasn't really doing anything with music. It was still, to me, just a hobby. Like, I enjoy doing this. An expensive hobby. Um, but I enjoy doing this. 
playlist. Like, I have a few songs, but I wasn't putting them out, anything. I mean, to be truthfully honest, I probably would have never put Shot the Clock out either. I randomly put it on TikTok one day and got a good reception. I'm like, oh, shoot, let me put this out. Yes. Um, but anyways, I recorded it after not recording for, like, maybe six months. And I came across the beat. Like, I randomly, I feel like rapping. I, like, looked, um, all my beats have been from YouTube so far. So I'm looking for beats. I come across that one. And interestingly enough, the, the name of the beat on YouTube was Ready or Not. Okay. So, and that's why the shot of the song is called Shot of Clock Ready or Not. Um, but I heard it and immediately I was like, oh, you know, I like this. And I went to the studio and I recorded it. And it took me a minute to record, probably just because I hadn't recorded it in a while. And I remember my engineer, he and I are, are tight. His name, his name is City 3000. Um, I recorded it and he was like, mm, yeah, I don't really, this is not your best one. Like, you've definitely come harder before. And I'm like, Mm, I think you just gotta sit with it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I like this one, and I went in and fixed some stuff, so we definitely like made it better from that first time recording it. But I was like, no, this is the one. Like, I, I really like this, and that's why I ended up putting it out. I'm glad you're still on here too. Oh yeah, I feel he like and I, I appreciate his input, but he knows I don't. Yeah. You know, if I like it, that's what it matters. Not surprised at all. I've heard that from a lot of girls and even like more established artists than yourself because mm -hmm. they're surrounded by us, you know, like the male yeah. industry. Especially even if you're doing music as a hobby, you go to the studio and be a guy engineer. Yeah. Yeah. So I had recently saw SZA saying like, oh, she thought her album was whack because all the guys all around were constantly telling her he was whack, like he wasn't going to work. Really? Or like, songs were turned down, like this is BS sort of thing. To, to the point where she didn't even want to put it out. Mm -hmm. She puts it out, she's the number one for weeks. She yeah. sold out to her. You cannot take men's opinion on female music, on girl music. And you know, I, the, I, I just was talking to somebody about that because I think it's unfortunate. You know, they can't for so many reasons that we don't have to get into right now, but yeah, are it. unable to appreciate female music um, or music by female artists because of the content. And, oh, we don't want to hear that and we don't want to listen to that. And it's like the barrier that exists there is is so useless because like we have to listen to male music and I enjoy it. You know, there's nothing, I don't, <laughs> I was about to say something wild, but <laughs> You know, I hear these things and it's like, yeah, that may not be my experience, but I'm not internalizing and being like, oh, I can't enjoy that because that's really? not something that I, I do. Y'all be turning up to all this music and you, you ain't showing nobody. Like, thank you. Like, you please so be for real. real. Exactly. I enjoy future music. I don't aspire to be one of his baby mamas. Hello. Hello. Baby mama. But I enjoy it. I listen to it. Yes. Sugar daddy music. I yes. appreciate it. Absolutely. I don't condone what he does in real life. Yeah. You guys, I thought you did with Supergirl. Yeah. You know, and when I finished Fab, I, you know, I had sent it. The interesting part, I kind of did it in two sessions. So I sent the rough cut to some a couple people. And I really like to stop doing that because when the vision is in my head, I'm like, I know what the finished product is going to sound like. But, you know, if you don't really do music, you may not be able to hear past exactly what you're hearing. But anyways, when I finished it, I sent it to a homeboy of mine. He's also an artist. And he was like, you know, this one is just okay. Like, I don't really like it. You know, Shot O'Clock was super dope, but this is this one is not it. And I'm like, mm, I don't think so. Like, the girls are going to like this. Like, this came from a video that literally has a, a 1.7 million views that I didn't think was going to blow up, and everybody went crazy. So, you know, and I mean, he and I even talked about it. He's like, you know, Sometimes you, we just don't know, you know, I, they, he heard a particular song that's going crazy right now and he didn't think it was good. And a couple other male artists said the same thing, like, well, since I didn't say who they were, they heard Don't Play With It by okay. Lola and they're like, this is not good, this is not good. And it's like, are we hearing the same thing? So they're like, you know, the women know what's going to pop and... I think that Fab is a great song. So it's incredible. Yeah. The other thing with that is, I feel like as a woman who listens to a lot of music all the time mm -hmm. and have my whole life, I can even tell when a female rapper has a guy bright for her. Because mm. it's like, oh, a girl wouldn't say it like that. Yeah. Like, oh, a girl yeah. wouldn't talk about it like mm -hmm. that. That's kind of, that's what yeah. she would say. Y'all all thought that was cool. Yeah. She went along with mm -hmm. it. No, that's not what we really want to. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because normally in all my recording sessions it's just me and my engineer that's like the one but i've tried a couple times with a couple other engineers so i had one session and it was like four dudes in the room and i remember 
you know, somebody trying to tell me, well, you know, I, I don't like that bar. You should say this, this, and that. And I'm like, mm, no, I don't think so. Like, <laughs> I would never say that. So, you know? <laughs> so no, I don't think that I should say that. I don't think I should change that bar. Um, and to this day, it's like, that's why I, I don't really have people in the studio with me because yes. you just start getting unsolicited advice that it's like, I didn't even ask you. And no, I don't think that that's what would work. So. No, it's not. Yeah. Was are you gonna do a video for that? Yes. I will I, be doing a video. I for love the shot clock video. Thank you. It was very fun. fun. I saw your TikTok about your, you know, your sorted situation. I'm glad you didn't give it up. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. What happened with it? Ooh, <laughs> do I want to talk about it? <laughs> you know, I don't yeah, I was very, very quick. I just again I put out the TikTok, which was literally just it was exactly what happened. I had had the song done. I played it for my friends for the first time. And they're like, oh, this is good. This is good. We listened to it all weekend. So we just did a little video in my living room, like us listening to it. And it started doing well. So I put the song out. I put the song out. And at the time, you know, this is my first song. I never done video. I happened to meet this videographer. And, you know, we kind of vibed well in the beginning. Just like, oh, you know, we're going to work, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, we shoot the video. And it was just a difficult experience the mm -hmm. whole time um just you know in terms of timing getting the video back all these things there was a lot of hoops and hurdles and I was so frustrated because it was a lesson learned for me you know in business you got to make sure you have everything in writing etc which is crazy because everywhere else in life yeah. I do that and but I, everything was moving so fast it's just like oh yeah you know so much excitement we're gonna do this oh this time it's gonna be here's the money the like you know and so I had no leg to stand on. I didn't have any video. I've spent all this money. Um, and you know, it's just me. There's no, there's nobody helping with any of this. Um, so I spent all this money and I don't have the video and I'm just asking and asking and asking and trying to get my video. And in the end, you know, I ended up over the last year or so, just from learning, doing TikTok and stuff, I've learned a little video editing. Like I did a lot of the edits. I did all of the visual effects for the video. Um, yeah, so, you know, it was a tough experience and I, I learned a lot from it. So I'm glad it was like early, but I'm excited to move on from that and like start doing other videos and, and being able to use what I've learned from that. Um, and at the end, you know, I, like, I really enjoy the video. I'm happy with the product that I put out. Um, and you know, I'm just happy that it's doing well. It's amazing, but I hope you learn from it that again, sometimes the acceptable life or stuff gets in our way. Mm -hmm. I'm here to learn this. I have to move get strict because yeah. my husband. Uh -huh. You gotta be strict with these people. Yeah. Like because you're coming in and you're cute and you're mm -hmm. nice and all that. People mm -hmm. try to play with you, they try to take advantage yeah. of that. And just because you're a good person, you're going <laughs> off that, like, oh, other people are raised well, mm -hmm. you know they have. No. <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to get into like how people are raised. I'm just saying like that. It's hard like, for us to deal with people on that yeah, level. Yeah, like, you know, and I think because mm -hmm. I tend to, I, I'm very empathetic. So it's mm -hmm. like, I understand certain things. I'm like, okay, you know, I don't know if it's something going on in this person's life, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. But I was just, you like one, that? it was getting to it. Everybody has a breaking point. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I tend to deal with people in a very, you know, in a way that I want to be treated. Mm -hmm. But I was getting to a place where it's like, all right, you know, what, what are we really doing here? But I didn't feel like, what, what am I doing? If I turn up on this person and, I, and they just block me and I never have anything, like, what would I have accomplished at that point? So, you know, lessons learned again, and it was what it was, but I'm happy with the video, so. The video is great. The song yeah, is great. Thank you, thank you. We're moving forward with it. Mm -hmm. I ask everybody that comes on the show, mm -hmm. if you could get a feature from any artist, you can give me three. Who would three, you try to get a feature from? Three features. Um, oof. But I haven't thought about this in a while. Are we talking like dream features yeah, or like feature. dream features? Yeah, the, their budget dream. is unlimited. Oh, if the budget is unlimited. It's getting it's, cleared it's no, matter Beyonce, what. no matter what. Beyonce, there we like go. That's immediately, okay. absolutely. Beyonce, um, you know, I think I would really love working with Megan. Like, it would be fun. It would be the funnest song. I need four. Okay. Okay, give us what you want. Megan, Kendrick. Kendrick. Just because that's home. Like, yes. 
Kendrick literally, yeah, Kendrick literally grew up like two corners away from where I grew up. So. Okay. Kendrick and Cardi. Like, Cardi. I just think, yeah, Cardi just seemed like so much fun. And I would love to, like, I don't know, she just seems like fun. So yes. I would love to, like, get to experience her energy in real life. Because I think that's, that, not even I think, that's really her. You know, everybody yes. always is like, that's Cardi, Cardi, this, this, this. So I think working with her would be fun. I think working with Megan would be fun. Yes. Um, and Beyonce is just. If you can get Kendrick back in his turned up party back, it's always fun. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You know, Kendrick, hey, he, he can do whatever he wants when he wants. And he's so. not on TDE anymore. He's on PG Lane. Mm-hmm. So maybe different rules over there. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm yeah. interested to see what Kendrick, will happen. Kendrick, come to the Kendrick. I know you Kendrick, support the girls. Listen. When, when you ready, I'm ready. Yeah, y'all have no girls in PG <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. All right. And then if you were going to go on tour with three people. Your three tour. They don't have to be the same people as your feature. You can switch it up one you can. Mm-hmm. I'll probably switch it up. Um, tour with three people. Mm-hmm. I would love to tour with Kendall Man. She's a Excited. yeah, you know Kendall Man. I love yes. her. Love Ken. I try, love, try, love, try. Hello. <laughs> I'm perfect. Yes, flawless. Um, I would love to tour with Kendall Man. Um. Sweetie. Sweetie. Yes. Okay. That's I love her. That's my girl. We to school together, everything. I think that would be just a great time and a familiar time. You know, we both Cali girls. And um oof. who else on tour? Who would be fun? Mm, this might be cheating a little bit, but City Girls. Okay. Yeah. City Girls. Carisha. JT. Yeah, I think that would be so fun. I think that would be fun. Yeah. Your music will mesh well together. Mm-hmm. That's like a parallel fan base. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I feel like they're a good, they're a good mix of party and family. Uh huh. So you're close to your family. Have your mom is here with everything. My mom. I love you. Can't support because you know black parents they give you a hard time with the arts. Like, wait, no, my mama. What? <laughs> the crazy thing is when I talk about you know all the people who were trying to mold me, etc. It was never my mom. My mom has always been like. Girl, whatever you want to do, we gonna do. Whatever you, if you want to go jump off a bridge, I'ma stop you. But we can talk. We can have a conversation about why you wanted to do that. Um, but no, mom. Literally, when I told her I want to do music, she's like, "Well, what do we need to do?" You know, oh, for everybody needs to write. Yeah. So um, my mom has always supported any and everything I want to do. And, she was and like, I just have a. Con- I definitely I would have conversations with her. This is early on, like about the content of my music. Okay. Like, you know, this is it's not gonna be PG thirteen, mm-hmm. you know, and she's like, You grown. So okay. very grown. So um that's it is what it is. I love yeah. that. All right. So what would you see yourself as far as music? Mm-hmm. Where would you if you could pick what would you be in three to five years this morning? In three to five years, oof. Um, um you know by that time I would definitely in three to five years I think Hopefully, I am established in a way that I can support other people. And that's what I love about female rap right now. I feel like it's very collaborative, very fun. You know, a lot of women giving shout-outs to other women, like big artists doing songs with these artists who we don't know at all. And so, in three to five years, I hope to be in a space where that could be me. You know, I'm established enough to be able to do that for other women. Um, And also just... Because of my background and, you know, having worked in corporate, et cetera, like, I hope to be in a space to really be able to make shifts in the music industry, the business itself. Because I feel like there has been no greater time when the industry itself is so separated from what is actually happening. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think that's why we keep having these conversations with people being like, there's no song of the summer. There's no hit record. There's no rap record that's been gone number one. You know, everybody's like, we're sick of samples. We're sick of this. We're sick of that. It seems like the people in these offices do not know what consumers want right now. Yes. There's a big disconnect. Um, and on the back end of that, you know, on the business side, when it comes to artists, there's just so much negative things that happen and, and negative situations that people end up in because they don't know better. So. You know, outside of music, if there's any way in which we can be making shifts in the industry itself, that would be amazing as well. Um, but yeah, I just I think it's interesting that right now 
I don't think these big labels know what people want. When we think about the biggest songs that have come out mm-hmm. like over the last couple of years, they were from artists who weren't well known, and they have this like gritty, unfinished, unpol not unfinished, but unpolished mm-hmm. sound. You know, it's not these super poppy records that they're trying to push out. We had FNF, then we had Pound Town, and like that is what people are gravitating to. So I just feel like there's a disconnect of what, what labels think people want right now and what the con- consumers are actually choosing. Yeah, I think it's because they're trying to make music based off like the algorithm type of thing yeah. and what we can sell. Mm-hmm. So every song, I, I heard someone, I think he was most deaf talking about it. They can attach it to like a product mm-hmm. or a lifestyle or something. And so they're not thinking about that as something yeah. that can go viral or go far mm-hmm. because they're business people. They're not thinking about the girl in the hood mm-hmm. that's like, I want to be fucking nigga free. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That was fun. And if y'all want to put some stuff in the video, yeah. unless you're going to product place for I don't care. Yeah. But this song touches me in a certain yeah. way. Oh, they would have never had a pregnant girl in the video. <laughs> like, they wouldn't. Well, we're only two songs deep on We're only music. two songs deep. So I'm sure so we'll get far. more. So far. We're going to get more very yeah. soon. Miss mm-hmm. Monette, if there's anything you can tell fans or people need to know about you to describe yourself, your music, mm-hmm. and I've never heard you before, what would mm-hmm. you say to them? Um, I would say when it comes to my music, um, don't expect one thing. You know, right now it's summer. We having fun. We getting cute. We saying, you know, F these, whatever. But eventually as we move forward from that, like I definitely want to have versatile, or not even one. I have records that are versatile, that are more personal, Mm -hmm. that are, you know, about real life situations. And so... That is what I hope people will get from my music is versatility. Like, yes, we're going to turn up and then we're going to talk about real life situations. Um, And so, you know, I just think that's what I would want people to expect from me is that unfortunately, again, because a lot of the girls are doing fun records, people see you and it's like, oh, you know, another one. Here's another one. You, You can only do this. You can only do that. And it's like, no, we can do it all, actually. And that's what I want people to know. Like, I don't, I didn't want to come out the gate and people be like, oh, you know, you're trying to be a she's conscious, to us. yeah, you're trying to be a conscious rapper, or she's preaching to mm-hmm. us. And it's, I want you to know we can do all of that. Um, so, yeah, that's what I want people to know. All right, exciting. Yeah. And that, and I haven't announced it yet, so you wouldn't know, but I do have a project coming out. Exciting! Yes, later in July. So I'm like super excited about that because, like I said, Shot O'Clock happened and the whole situation with the video and it was just a lot. And so now everything for me is about consistency. And because it is summer, I am putting together a playlist of songs that are all for the summer. It's going to be an It Girl playlist. Yes! Um, and so that is going to be coming out really soon. I'm super excited about it. Exciting. All right. We got yeah. Miss Monet, Shot O'Clock, Fab. Absolutely. Send them racks through her birthday. Okay. Tomorrow. I'm so Tomorrow. excited. Yeah. Can they cash out boost? Absolutely. It's cancer season. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited about that. And the project is going to be called Ready or Not. Ready or Not. Yeah. I so I hope everybody's ready. All right. Make sure you pre-save. We're going to put links up, everything. Yes, absolutely. Watch the Shot O'Clock music video. Follow Miss Monet on all social media platforms. Stream fab. Stream fab. Mm-hmm. Make some cool videos. We need to get the challenge going. Absolutely. So, we, we, and you know, it's funny. People have given me a couple ideas. So I have some stuff coming. Um, but yeah, we definitely have to get a challenge going for fab and for shot o'clock. Yes, you know, we haven't moved on from shot o'clock. I no. feel like shot o'clock still hasn't gotten its time yet. Um, and so, you know, all of that. We're going to be pushing all of that for the rest of the summer. All right. Ready or not, coming soon. Ready or not. Well, Monet. thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here with you. This was amazing. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. She- Make sure you support her online. She's my favorite person on TikTok. Oh, thank you. And listen, girl, because you know I'll be <laughs> under your videos. You'll be having me. When you use that one when video. <laughs> I said, what in the world is this doing? That's this how you know I'll be watching your content. <laughs> It's a, oh, it's a random Miss okay. Monet sound on a fashion review video. And yes. she's talking about some real problems, too. And I'm just looking at the girl's dress. Oh, yeah. She's but no, talk. I'm so grateful that you invited me. Thank you for having yes. me. You know, I've been enjoying your content for, I don't even know. I, I, it's been a while yes. now. Maybe almost a year, I feel like. Um, so I just appreciate you having me. My pleasure. All right, everybody, Miss Monet. Thank you for watching. Leave us some Thank comments. Uh, yes, please leave us some comments. Tell I us your favorite bar from Shot Talk or Fab or both.
All right. Thank Absolutely. you guys for watching. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.